My name is Star. Two R's. Daddy named me that. Garden Heights. Mama and Daddy says our life is here because our people are here. We got Mr. Adapted Lewis from the best-selling young Mr. adult Lewis's novel, The Hate You Give, Daddy follows a teenager story. caught between two worlds in America. The movie touches on tough pregnant. subjects like racial profiling and black-on-black -black crime. Williamson it premiered at TIFF and is already generating a lot of buzz ahead of awards season. Basically, Eli Williamson is back to tell us what he thinks of The Hate You Give. Pretty timely subject in America, that's for sure. Very timely, very complicated subject, and I think uh, the what makes this movie so palatable is the way it personalizes it. And so, as you said, our window into this world is Star, and Star, played by Amanda Stenberg, is this young woman who is caught between these two worlds. She lives in the black part of town, but her parents are afraid of her going to the local high school, so she spends her days going to the posh private school, and then on the weekends, you think, see things are very different, and so there are kind of two stars. Uh, let's take a look at uh, both of them. No, those kids are lit. Basically, Williams and Star doesn't give anyone a reason to call her ghetto, and I hate myself for doing it. Until the weekend comes around. I get those goosebumps every time. What's up? Where you been at? I, mean, I don't know. You be hanging with all the white kids. Shut up. And there you go. So you get a sense of what is about to happen. She is out one night with her friend Khalil. And Khalil is, is involved in some things that he should not be involved with. But interestingly, the movie portrays him as, you know, certainly there is a connection there. And then they get pulled over. And then he's asked to step out of the car. And then there is a shooting. And he was unarmed. And so suddenly she is the focus of this uh, incident that is threatening to tear the town apart. And so suddenly these two carefully separate worlds that she lives I and mean, when she feels a responsibility to her friend she feels pressure to speak out but she realizes and this is the brilliance of the story she realizes that by doing so she's going to kind of reveal who she is to both sides of her her friends and her family and that's the interesting thing about her character is that she's kind of too white for her black friends because of her association to the private school and she's too afraid to be her true black self with her private school friends and of course this incident is sparking an unarmed black teenager shot by a white police officer yeah. has been center of, of so many protests uh, in the united states um, so this is a novel, loved by many, yes. and that's always a tough transition to get a best-loved novel onto the screen. How does this one do? Yeah, Angie Thomas, uh, her book has been uh, on the New York Times bestseller list for, I think, about 84 weeks and counting. I think it does great. I mean, these are very complicated issues, but again, I think why it works so well is that instantly, Amanda Stenberg is, I mean, she's very relatable. We understand who she is. She's this shy, geeky little kid who's kind of afraid to be herself, regardless of where she is. And so... Even if you might not necessarily agree with the politics, I think you understand her predicament. And what I like about Amanda is as an actor, she is good enough that she gives you those levels where you see that she's pretending to be someone that she's not, but you see the weariness under the pretense. So there's various kind of levels happening there at the same time. Another revelation in this movie, you saw Common there who actually plays a police officer and gives the police point of view in a very interesting scene. But Russell Hornsby plays her father and her father is someone who used to deal drugs, but now is quite militant, actually teaches her kids, her, her sister and her brother, about the Black Panther's 10-point program. Now, my one criticism would be that the ending, considering the complexity of these issues, is a little too tidy, a little too neat and clean for this story. But at the same time, I have to say, I had a chance to watch this movie with a group of young black teens from Toronto, and these women talked to me. I mean, the power of them seeing themselves on the screen and the validation, I mean, basically they were telling me, we're stars. And we've never really seen someone who actually speaks to the kind of things that we see. I mean, that young woman there in the red, she's 13 years old. She talked about being terrified of seeing her father pulled over. So there's a scene in the movie where the father is pushed up against the glass by the, the police officers. And that young woman that I talked to, she, she was overcome. And so there is a power in seeing these stories and the validation of Hollywood telling these stories. Certainly, you can't deny that. It's a strong film. It's a timely film. Four stars out of five. Okay, Eli Glass, you're doing double duty today. Thanks again. You're welcome.